fulfilling. It actually said in the essay that I'm going to use for inspiration, make your labor fulfilling. Uh, so there it is. Okay, I'm here, I'm live, and I am looking to see that someone can log in and see us. And I welcome you all this beautiful day that gives us a good taste of what our summer is going to be like. <laughs> Yesterday, oh my gosh, humidity. I forgot all about humidity, right? And you're like, oh, that's what it is. Okay, Klee. Well, you have won the spiritual mind treatment, so let me know for what you would like me to do spiritual work. You're all set. Okay, and I'm assuming you can hear me. Otherwise, type in, I can't hear you, because I'm going to go forward. All right. Treatment time. Treatment time. <sighs> For what should I treat? Clarity and vitality. Right? Right. Motivation. And what was that? Motivation. Motivation. Oh, yeah, motivation. Yeah. And love. Listen there. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there we go. All right, so this word is being spoken for each one. And if there's anyone or any place on the planet that you would like included, just think of their name or the name of that place now and, and realize that the infinite mind knows what you're talking about and can certainly handle all that too. Because there is only one mind and that mind is infinite, eternal, infinite. And so it can never be stretched too thin. In fact, this infinite mind does not stretch. This infinite mind is. It is omnipresent. There is not a spot where this infinite mind is not. And so wherever anything is, all of the intelligence of the universe is present. And right at the point of anything, there is an awareness of all that is going on everywhere else in the universe. And so all of this intelligence and knowing is right where each one is. And at that point of conscious awareness of each one, at that point of authority that each one has, it is all of the knowledge, intelligence, and clarity of this infinite mind that each one is drawing upon, receiving its wisdom, its guidance, its indication of what is one's to do, to know, to decide. This infinite mind knows all that is and all that is already in unfoldment and it also knows what is possible. And to God, all things are possible. There is not a thought that cannot be created into manifestation by the all-powerful law of the divine. And so each one is now realizing the mind that each one is using every time he or she thinks. Each one is now fully aware of the power that each one is directing with those thoughts that he or she chooses. And so each one having all of the wisdom and clarity guiding them is now agreeing with those thoughts, ideas, actions, activities, decisions, choices that are moving each one into a greater manifestation of good, a greater manifestation of goodness beyond anything that has gone before. Because each one is now choosing greater good from the infinite all good yet to take form. The infinite potential. And so for each one, there is so much more available, ready to express, to take form. And each one is now allowing that inner guidance to bring these thoughts into one's consciousness and each one is choosing to accept them. As a result, each one is experiencing the vitality of the living, breathing spirit of life. 
Each one is filled and enthused with the spirit of joy, of life, of living, of expressing. It is a delight and a vitalizing force that each one is aligning with and accepting and allowing and permitting as well as selecting and choosing. And so each one is motivated. Each one is guided. Each one is filled with the presence of love and loving their expression of life completely. Each one is loving that within them which inspires and empowers him or herself to move forward, to take new action, to experience new things. And each one is experiencing all of this with the full backing and support of the universe, with all of its power, wisdom, and authority, with all of its love and its joy and expression, and all of its support, its resources, its things, money, energy, whatever it is that is required for each one to express the infinite good within him or herself in a new and delightful way, it is all provided in that goodness, that the divine creates greater good in ways and means of goodness. And every idea in the mind of God is complete. It is a seed that takes form, full flowered, and in that seed of the idea contains everything necessary for this idea to manifest, including all of the ways and the means, including all the guidance, including all of the decisions that each one must make for the full manifestation of that which has begun as an idea. Each one is now accepting these ideas, accepting all of the time, the resources, all of the space, all of the motivation, as well as the courage, all of the fascination, energy, vitality, all of the delight and all of the health that is a part of expressing something new, something wonderful, something that makes living this life worth living. Each one is given this life that is worth living. And each one accepts it, loves it, enjoys it, is free in it with peace of mind and circumstances and moving from good to greater good in ways and means of goodness. This is the truth. I am grateful it is so. I release this word. It is done and so it is. And that's the way it is. All right, so we have lots of people joining us since I began. Hello, Deja, Margit, Angela, and Tina. There we go. And Deja, you also can get a special spiritual mind treatment from me. Ah, there we go. So Reverend Rich will take us away. Many pray along the way, they don't stop to wonder, the world is coming to, there's something higher, reveal the way to great love, oh yeah, so the world is telling me, stay up the wish, for the ones who are not me, love can take us higher, we feel the way to higher love. Oh yeah, the so whom we let it wash over us. We let it pick us kinder. We let it make us better. We let it be. We let it wash over us. We let it make us kinder. We let it pick us better. We let it be. We let it. Just some crying on the way, walking through the sadness, a world that needs to know. Love can take us higher, feel the way to greater love. Oh 
oh yeah. So the truth is telling me, the only answer to all humanity. We can set it fire, live the way to hide the love. Oh yeah. So who we let it? Watch your breath be dead. Take us kind of dead. Take us better. We let it. decision now. What is it that we are open to receive this day? And realize that we're starting our day being here, uh, calling on the infinite support, infinite mind to guide us with all of its wisdom. And so since everything begins with a thought, we receive the thoughts that make every good thing possible. And so we open to receive it and we do receive it. That's it. We got it. It's done. And so it is. I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready to receive, I am opening, I am opening, my heart is ready to receive. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Princeton. My name is Mary Vercondi and I'm a practitioner here. We are a healing, loving, welcoming community that teaches and practices the principles of the science of mind for the spiritual growth and well-being of ourselves and the world. And I welcome you coming here this morning. I just want to share a little experience I had over the last couple of weeks. Three or four years ago, I purchased a coat rack with a little bench on it to put by the front door so we could teach our dog to jump up there so we could easily put the leash on. It didn't have a cushion, so I bought a cushion that didn't quite fit. So for three or four years, about every third time she jumped on it, the cushion would fall. And I would say, man, i got to fix that. How can I fix that? Three or four years it went on. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I said, you know what? If I pulled the corner around the post and got a safety pin, I could pin the cushion and it wouldn't fall off. I should do that. Two weeks ago. Thought that. Need to get a safety pin. Then last week, I'm digging in the hall closet for something, and guess what I came across? A package of safety pins. So I took the pins, pulled the corner of the cushion around, I pinned it, hasn't fallen off since. So 
all along there was a solution and all along I had the tool to implement that. What I was lacking was the awareness that I had it. So I invite you this morning to expand your awareness of what is around you. Right? That's why we come here, to expand our awareness because you have everything you need for any problem, any solution, any change that you want to make in your life. You already have it. Just expand your awareness, become aware of it, and then you can implement it. And so if you need help with that, you want more of that, please visit our website, cslprinceton.org. There you can request a prayer request. You can contact one of the practitioners and we will be more than happy to work with you and hold the truth for you. Okay. There's a treatment on, on the phone, both in English and in Spanish. If you need something right away, you can call and you can listen to that. We're here to support you in growing your awareness, which is why we're all here this morning. So I welcome you, I'm open to you, and I'm loving you this morning. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> That's, that's the word. so many times where I forget that I have the tools. I forget that things are it's right there. Everything that we need is right there. And so this morning, I was flipping into the Science of Mind, the textbook, and I love to just flip through and see like what's there for me today. And so this is what came. The subjective state of a man's thought decides what is going to happen to him in his objective experience. Yes. Yes. So we know this. I know this. We've talked about this. I know that what I'm thinking, what's going on in my mind is what I'm creating in my world, but there are so many times where I kind of forget this and those thoughts just keep going on and creating all sorts of things that I'm like, wait, how did I get here? How did this, this thing show up in my life? And so today I thought we'd have a little spiritual practice where we will tend to the gardens of our lives. And so I invite you to get into a comfortable position Maybe your feet are flat on the ground, sitting up tall. Maybe gently closing your eyes or bringing your gaze down. And just start noticing your breath. Maybe letting it slow, finding a natural rhythm. And finding that place inside where it's safe and warm. Maybe imagining that you're walking up a beautiful path. Just noticing your feet on that path, the sounds of the ground beneath you. And as you're walking up, you know that you're walking to the garden that is your life in this moment. And as you enter the garden, you'll notice the entranceway and start to inspect what's growing in this garden. And we'll just breathe here, knowing that whatever's here is just at this moment. It's 
So maybe you'll notice some beautiful flowers. Maybe you'll notice some weeds. Maybe there's areas that are very tended to. Maybe they look pristine. Maybe there's other areas where maybe we've left that let it go kind of for a while. And so as you're inspecting, you might notice what parts of your life these areas are. Maybe part of it is relationships. Maybe some areas have to do with your career, the work that you're doing, your expression of life. And so I invite you to look to see what areas are beautiful. And soak those in. And notice maybe those thoughts or those beliefs that have helped that to become there. What truth were you knowing that allowed that to grow? And let's look at those areas that maybe aren't tended to. What do these plants need to grow? What truth needs to be revealed for this to grow fuller, healthier, more vibrant? And let's look for some of those weeds. What weeds are there? What are some thoughts that we have that aren't serving us, that are taking up some space in our garden? And so I invite you to start pulling those weeds. And maybe you know what those thoughts or beliefs are. And maybe you just know that it's something ucky we don't want. And that's fine either way. But we're going to grab that, that weed and pull it from the root. And you might notice that that's a long, tangly root. It might come up easy or it might be hard to pull. But we're going to pull up some of those. Maybe you have one big one. Maybe there's lots of little ones. But let's pull some of those weeds up. We're going to carefully throw those right into that compost bin on the side. Pulling up all those weeds, every bit of it, as much as we can. Now when we see that clear space, what are the seeds we want to plant here? How can we make sure that the soil stays fertile? What do we need in our lives? help the soil stay fertile? Are there spiritual practices that would serve you? Is there something you could do in your daily life? Maybe calling a practitioner? Maybe treatments for yourself? Just notice whatever comes up. And if it doesn't, know that it will come up when it's time. And in this soil now, if there's something you know that you're ready to plant or something that you're ready to tend to, go ahead and do that. Maybe you need to water a certain area. Maybe an area needs a little bit of work in the soil. Whatever thing needs to be tended to, you can go ahead and do that. And take one look around that garden and see where it is right now. Knowing that you have all the tools you need to tend to this garden. And this garden is always here for you to come back to and check in on whenever you'd like. And if there's one last thing that you would like to plant or care for, you can do that now. And maybe thinking of that spiritual truth you would like to really put into this garden now. It can be a spiritual truth like that you know right now. It can be an idea of something you'd like to grow, like growing in love or growing in joy. And we'll thank that garden now for being there for us. We'll thank ourselves for tending to this garden. We can give it one last goodbye as we start to walk back down that path. 
and noticing ourselves now back in our chair or seat wherever we are noticing our feet on the ground noticing our body and taking in a full breath here and letting it go you can gently either blink your eyes open if you'd like or keep your eyes closed for this treatment mm. This word is being spoken for each one here and each one listening. There is one life. The life is God's life. That life is each one's life right here and now. And each one here is God made manifest in individual form. Therefore, each one here has all of the qualities of the divine. Each one here is the creator of their universe, of their world, of each one's garden. And each one's garden is full of all of these divine qualities. Each one's life is growing in each divine quality. And each one becomes clearer and clearer on how to take care of their garden, of their life. Everything that was removed from that garden stays removed. The divine knows what is on each one's heart and what is in each one's garden and is fully supporting all that has been taken out and knowing that that is not part of each one's life. The divine also knows each idea, each thought, each divine quality that has been planted, each one that has been growing and is continuing to grow and allows each one's life to grow even fuller in each quality. Each one's life is full of divine, beautiful expression. Each one's life is full of love, is full of joy, and is full of that divine presence. Right here, right now, each one knows and is showing up in each one's life that they are God made manifest. Each one is the creator of each one's life. And even when we feel, each one feels like they do not know what to do, the divine knows and each one allows the divine to move through. I am so grateful that each one's life is moving from good to greater good by ways and means of good. Grateful that this word is so. And so I release this word to the law knowing it's already done. And so it is. So it is. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, this is a tune, <clears throat> one of my favorite uh, songs. And it's <clears throat> definitely one of my favorite uh, Beatles songs. And I choose to believe that it's a love song to God. Mm. Who knows how long I love you? You know I love you still. Will I wait a lonely lifetime? If you want me to, I will. For if I ever saw you, I didn't catch your name, but it never. I will always feel the same Love you forever and forever Love you with all my heart Love you whenever we're together Love you when we're apart When at last I find you This song will fill the air Sing it loud so I can hear you Make it easy to be near you For the things you do and do you do me I know you will I will Okay, 
All right, so uh, before I get into our topic for today, I just want to uh, share with you some demonstrations I've had, uh, which have proven to me I can't say anything here without <laughs> the law <laughs> coming back at me. So two Sundays ago, I believe in my talk, I was giving as an example uh, my opinion that I needed a new cell phone and, you know, that, that the law will support you for your greater good and if you don't go along with it uh, at the onset, it will push you along. I don't know, I said something like that, but as soon as I went into my car after our service, my cell phone refused to recharge ever again. So la that two weeks ago Sunday, I immediately went to the store and bought a new phone and ah, ah, it's a nice phone. They've made some improvements since my last one. I have three times the storage space. And it's, a, it's always doing some interesting things, uh, keeping me alert, keeping me alive. And then um, over the past few months, I believe, I, every once in a while I've mentioned that I'm going to get off the grid, I'm going to stop cable TV, and you know, I'm going to go a whole new way. And so in the replacement of the siding of my home, uh, the divine law took care of that for me so I don't have at, in my home any internet, any home li landline, uh, any TV, all gone. And um, the company that provides it said, look, there's no point in us coming to re, re fix that now when your siding's not done. You know, they just ripped off the old and it'll probably be maybe a week, maybe two before they put on the new. So that's that then. And I'm like, and why is this happening to me? Because I said so. Uh, and the law is just cooperating. So that's the end of all my sharing of my personal things. <laughs> done. It is done. <laughs> Unless, of course, I want the change. <laughs> so our... I'm still using our little book, Collected Essays of Jack Holland, and his essay for today is called Make Your Labor Fulfilling. I wrote as our topic, Make Your Work Fulfilling, a uh, topic very dear to me, and I think he says something a little bit different on this topic than I've, I've thought before. So um, here we go. He says... If labor is not fulfilling, it is because we don't believe it to be. Lack of mo motivation always makes for drudgery. It always will. We must realize that we are craftspersons molding and shaping a part of God's creation. God intended that life be enjoyed. And so he asks the question, how is motivation changed so that we can love the job? And the answer is, it is changed by finding a new dimension of self, which can be quickened and brought alive through the work experience and then by doing it. So what he points out here is something that I've certainly said before and we've heard before. Life is meant to be enjoyed and that our labor, our work, our, is our expression of who we are. Uh, but we get confused about that. And he says, if you are out of work, retired, incapacitated in some way, or have a job which seems very routine and non-stimulating, ask yourself, have I truly looked first to acknowledge what I am and secondarily to the work experience? Or have I expected some kind of work experience to provide me with fulfillment? And that's, uh, I even hear metaphysical uh, uh, people say, uh, do what you love and the money will follow. And, um, and that, they, you know, what is my purpose in life? I have to figure out what my purpose is. I have to figure it is what I'm meant to do. And all of that, uh, whether we realize it or not, is looking at the outward to provide an inner experience of fulfillment to us. 
Like if I'm just doing this, then I'll be happy. If I'm just doing that, then I'll be happy. The, the problem with that approach is it's got the cart before the horse. I hate old platitudes, but there it is. Because we need to realize who we are, and we are creations of the divine, infinite in potential. And when we know that's who we are, then we realize our place in the creative action. And then we are fully engaged in the creative activity of this infinite life. He says, thought, action, manifestation is the order. Now we know um, that if we want to manifest something, we get the idea of the thing and then the law moves heaven and earth and us to demonstrate it, to bring it into form. But we have to become aware that we are an integral, necessary part of the law moving things and having them take form. And so we receive a thought of a greater idea that we want to express, and we direct the law to manifest it, but that our activity is the part of the process that is ours to do. And so as we are manifesting greater good, we want to be conscious, aware, and value that our, our now activity and our whole consciousness in our activity is critical to what gets manifested. For example, say you want an improved relationship with a particular person. Better communication, more harmony, whatever, I don't know. And they're nowhere near you at the moment. We have that thought of a more harmonious relationship. We do a spiritual mind treatment. We direct the law. And our activity is right where we are. If we are wanting to experience more love and harmony in our life, our question is, right where we are, how can I bring more love and harmony right where I am? And that's our activity. Uh, years ago, I worked on an assembly line of a major perfume factory here in New Jersey. And uh, I've shared this with you before, uh, the activity was pretty mundane. But even there, I know one could practice the activity of bringing more love and harmony into my life. Yes, we do it by engaging in our thoughts of more love and harmony, but then it's our activity. As I'm doing what I'm doing, am I doing what I'm doing with more love, with more harmony? with more thoughtfulness, with more of this infinite self that I am. And what we need to get is that where we are is where we have to start taking action to manifest this other good that we are directed the law to bring forward. We're not, we're not segregated. And so if we want more love in this particular relationship that's nowhere near us, we get ourselves fully engaged, fully present with what we are, and in some way, I'm going to treat this book with more love and more harmony and more respect. I have to give my full attention to it as if my life depended upon it because my improved relationship with so-and-so does depend upon it. Thought, activity, manifestation. And we've heard before, right? Begin where you are. 
But again, we get all confused. We've got ourselves all segregated. Okay, relationships is about when I'm with people. And uh, success is when I'm at the job. And money is when I do whatever I gotta do in order to make money. But no, your, your, your thought and your now action regarding yourself and wealth and more money starts now with what you've got right in front of your face to do. So he says, good stuff here, thought, action, manifestation. Labor or activity is the necessary link between thought and manifestation. If we feel put upon in our endeavors, our labors, then we must change the thought. Thought always comes first, not the labor. But labor is the agency through which thought must pass. When this becomes central in our thinking, we will realize the importance of not just looking for the good in what we are doing, uh, but we want to change the good that we are being in our doing. He tells us, uh, he's got this quote that Jesus said, I come to minister, not to be ministered onto. And he says this being ministered onto is the consciousness of laboring under conditions, circumstances, and activities of the world. We might feel manipulated, controlled, directed by people and circumstances around us. We are laboring under afflictions which we have accepted in our world. We are not here to be ministered to by the outer conditions. We are here to express the truth of who we are. And then that's when we are changed so that we are no longer ministered to, but we are ministering. Maybe where you are right now is where the divine wants more love to be, where the divine wants more harmony to be, especially if, you, if you're working in um, uh, a particular aspect of expression where the consciousness of the human race in that expression is very negative. And there you are. And I've had many, many, many of those jobs. Uh, and you do, you feel put upon and, and, you, and you're like, I'm only gonna give them as much as they're paying me for and they don't deserve anything more because of blah, blah, blah. I remember having all of those thoughts. And when you change that perspective to here I am I'm an infinite being what more can I bring what more of myself can I bring to this little part of the world that I've been assigned to what is it that I'm here to give, to bring, that they didn't ask for. And then he quotes Ralph Waldo Emerson. He says, for the more truly he consults his own powers, the more difference will his work exhibit from the works of others. Right? In other words, each one of us is an individualized expression of the infinite and our uniqueness is what we bring to bear into whatever it is that we are doing. So even if I'm on, the, on that assembly line putting caps onto perfume bottles, there is a uniqueness that I am that no one else can bring. But it's for me to figure out what that is in the moment that I'm doing it. He goes on with Emerson. By doing his work, he makes the need felt which he can supply and creates the taste by which he is enjoyed. In other words, the uniqueness that we are, no one knows they want it until you 
valuing that which you are, start giving it, the world realizes, oh my gosh, we wanted that all along. I, I will give this example. I was practicing this in another version decades ago and working, I just got hired to work for a lawyer and he gave me as my first assignment, I mean, he's, he gave me two documents, big, thick documents, teeny, teeny print, and he said, I want you to compare them side by side and note all the differences between the two documents. I took him literally. And so for three days, I'm with rollers, I'm going down and marking changes, marking changes, marking changes, and I felt the energy of his disapproval. I felt, I felt like he was wondering, what the heck is she doing in there? But I was doing what he told me to do, and so I'm going through, and I know I chose to have the thought, I'm doing what I can do as best I can do it. I value it, and I just let it be. I didn't finish that sentence. When he finally, when I finally was done with the task and presented it to him, he, his response was, oh my God. Because he had been reviewing these kinds of documents his whole lawyer life, and he had never caught all the changes that I had caught. And all of a sudden, he was delighted with the work that I did. And that one little task that I did, which I think was, uh, he probably meant it to keep her occupied for a little while. Suddenly, I had to review all the documents that came in against the prior document and do exactly the same thing. And he never said a word about how long it took me because of the value of what I provided. In other words, it was a great example of me providing something of myself that he didn't even know he needed, he missed, or that he would want until I provided it. And that's what we want to realize about all of our work, that we are providing something beyond what the employer thinks they're getting, paying us for. And that no one can give what we are providing. We need to realize that about ourselves. I am an infinite presence, uniquely created, and I am providing something in being myself and doing what is mine to do. No one can replace me. And the world will know how much they need what I am giving after I've given it, after they see it. Do you, do you hear the difference between how the human race usually associates work? You, you know, you're like, um, I, need a, I need more money, I need a job, and so we look through the zip recruiter, I don't know, whatever it is. And I, as I look at all the job descriptions, I, I actually feel myself trying to fit into what they're saying. I imagine rewriting my resume to kind of fit what they're trying to say. And what Jack Holland is telling us is, uh-uh, we are something unique. They didn't know that they needed who we are and what we have to give until they get us and, and we be it. But see, that's what is ours to do, is to be our uniqueness and let who we are and what we are doing show the world. So it's uh, making your activity fulfilling is a combination of realizing I am a unique being and I'm going to bring all of myself to this particular activity, all my attention, all of my focus to it, all of my energy, all my desire to do a great job, all of this to it, all that I've got to give to it, that this is bringing through this uniqueness I am. That's one good reason to do it. And the other good reason is, if we are desiring more success in our lives, this is the way we get there. 
by beginning where we are or more love in our relationships. Well, the way that you begin is by loving washing the dishes, whatever it is that you have before you to do. The way we do anything is the way we do everything. Do we get that? And so it does matter how you approach anything because it is the way you're bringing your uniqueness through. So Emerson says, by doing the work, we make the need felt, which only we can supply. And creates the taste by which we are enjoyed. I didn't know I wanted that. I didn't know I wanted someone like you. Well, I knew you would, right? Who wouldn't, right? As you, as you connect with that unique self that you are, you begin realizing how much you're bringing to the table that they didn't even ask for. That, that calm interaction that you have with some of the people outside the water fountain, water cooler, coffee machine, whatever, has an effect on the entire company. Your presence, your peace, your words of wisdom, your attitude, your laughter, your consciousness, infinite consciousness you bring. This is who you are. And when you know what that is, then he says, uh, well, let me go back to Emerson. He says, the common experience is that the man fits himself as well as he can to the customary details of that work or trade he falls into and tends it as a dog turns a spit. Then is he a part of the machine he moves. The man is lost. Until he can manage to communicate himself to others in his full stature and proportion, he does not yet find his vocation. In other words, you cannot do the work that you love until you stop looking for the work to be something that you love. But, and as you bring yourself, your whole self to the table and whatever it is, what happens is your true self in all of its uniqueness gets louder, gets bigger. It gets recognized by the world and then that which you were meant to do appears. But you can't make it happen. You got, because the uniqueness that you are has to be discovered by us in our activity. Our action is the way we discover that unique self that we are being. And then, it, we, right, we need to appreciate it when we do it. It's a, he says that a lot, of, uh, a lot of us are preoccupied. Instead of occupied with our lives, we are preoccupied with what do they want, uh, I don't like what I'm doing, uh, I wish I could do something. We're, we're, we're not actually living our lives, we're rehearsing our lives. We're waiting until this happens, till that happens, da, 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 till I get promoted, till I leave this job, till I get this blah, 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 and then all this good. We are preoccupied. And when we are preoccupied, we're full. Nothing new can come in. And what we need to do is stop with the pre and start living our life, and our life is right now. Right now, you're all listening to me, right? But uh, perhaps the, one of the next steps certainly for those of you who are physically here, is you're going to be driving your car. It's not just driving my car. All of you driving your car. All of you present. All of your love, all of your success, all of your goodwill, all of your joy driving your car. 
How many are going to do that? You could raise your hands, but be honest. I don't think I can raise my hand because as chances are, as soon as I get in my car, everything I've said is <laughs> gone. I'm now, you know, in my usual mode, which is uh, the noise the car is making. I got to do this. I got to do that. Where am I going to go? Whatever. I'm not fully present driving the car, but yet, uh, if we take all that's being said here, yeah, my greater good demands I be fully present in all that I am doing now. In other words, the path to my greater good starts now. And driving my car is all I've got. And so we want to contemplate these things and when we do become aware of it give all that we've got and in giving all it's not like more force or more effort or more energy it's because we are infinite beings more of ourselves more of our heart more of our thought more of our care to everything that we are doing with those things that do fascinate and and get our attention as well as those as those things that we don't think about at all give it all to everything thought action manifestation he says put this concept into the beginning of the process for fulfillment so take a moment right now and think about your next form of greater good that you desire Got anything? <laughs> Anybody got something? We got some. Okay, people's got something. I gotta get something. I gotta get with the pro my next greater good that I desire. Let's see. Okay, all right. I got it. I got it. All right. I got it. All right. So that's the thought. Now look at that thought and consider what quality of the divine is present in that, or qualities. There may be some. So in my idea of greater good, there's newness, there's harmony and order, and oh my gosh, surprisingly, there's more love. Now, I bring those qualities to what I am doing now, right? Some of you, whatever those qualities are, you bring it to paying attention to what's being said by me, but more importantly, what's being said within you. You pay attention. And with it, you bring these qualities, harmony, order, a whole lot of love. Love is, I think, love is so easy to apply to anything. Universal principle. You can always work at it and it always will produce great results. And newness, those were mine, right? Newness. And then what we ask ourselves is the question, how can I bring more newness to what my driving today? How can I bring more love? Whatever your quality is, how can I be or give more of this quality than I have or have before? You just ask your higher self that question and fully ready to take action, to do it, to try it. And that's what we're called to do. That's our labor. That's our expression. And it is more fulfilling because more of us is available to be filled. Right? When you're doing two tasks at once, uh, simultasking, whatever, well, you're not giving all of yourself to either. And, and you know what that's like. You're... Uh, People talking on the, I watch people in my neighborhood, they're talking on their cell phone while they're walking their dog. Mm. 
I don't know. Other people have seen that too. And I think, okay, how's the dog feeling about this? Well, the dog's smelling around and doing all this sort of stuff. And I, and I think, well, I guess maybe, you know, at other times the walks will be fo totally focused on the dog. And really, how interesting is it to be fully focused on the dog while the dog is taking the walk? Uh, I don't know. I don't have a dog. And that might be the reason. But if you're wanting to bring more love into your life, and maybe you want a relationship where there is greater involvement, greater connection, greater communication. Well, you got to begin with your dog. Get a dog. Get a dog. <laughs> <laughs> I would say get a cat, but those of you who have cats, you know, <laughs> bringing greater love and communication and connection is not always appreciated. Uh, but yet you begin where you are with what is yours to do and it will start the activity of you being more and more of your unique self and see this is the thing when you start bringing your whole self to anything you discover how valuable you are and you do discover your uniqueness and you do realize your worth and you do realize what you bring that nobody else brings. And you are able to go to a job interview and you are able to tell them, okay, you want somebody who can put these widgets together. Yeah, yeah, anybody can do that. But I bring something else. I bring my whole self to it. I don't know if you want to say this, but if you're me, I could say, I don't say, but I could say, I bring my consciousness. And I'm going to treat for this company. And you are going to have halcyon days ahead, one way or the other. Everything's going to change, and everything's going to be more wonderful. That's what I bring. You might not want to say that. But you need to know that about yourself. And everything has changed then. So when you're interviewing for that next job or when you're considering the next activity for you to engage in, when you're, you're at that point where you're making a decision, all of a sudden, all of your thought is, can I bring more of myself in this activity than I have before? Is it an opportunity for me to give more of myself? And then when you take it, you know why you're there. Yeah, you're going to do what they said to do, but you're also there to grow in a way that's important to you. That matters to you. And that will manifest in all these other areas of our lives. Yes. Now is the time. We begin now. And what is before you is the way. So, I have a little meditation on success by Ernest Holmes. I may have read this before. I've been carrying it around for a while. And so let's take a moment, and Reverend Rich is ready to play something, right? Uh, sure. Sure. Surprising him. He got up. I'm using him. So, uh, he's going to play something for us, and when I come back, I'll read this meditation. We can contemplate on all this going on. Do a meditation now. I'll play No, no. Okay. We need a break. Everybody, think. Take one single breath for granted 
God forbid love ever see you do empty handed. I hope you still feel small when you stand beside the ocean. And everyone's so close, I hope one more Promise me you'll give faith a fighting chance. When you get in your sit it out of dance. I hope you dance. I hope you dance. I hope you never feel the mountains in the distance. Never sail far on the path of least resistance. Living might may take a chance, but they're worth it. And loving might be a sin, but it's worth making. Don't let some help and heart leave you bitter. When you come close to settle, please reconsider. Through the heavens above, for the passing glance. When you get joy, sit it out of dance. I hope you dance. I hope you dance. When you come close to shout it out, reconsider. Give the hands of the more than a passing glance. When you get a choice, sit it out or dance. I hope you dance. I hope you dance. I hope you dance. Everything. That was the whole talk in one song. And so, let's take where you are, who you are, what you've got next, on all that you desire to be. Bring that all present on the table in your consciousness. And let's know what Ernest Holmes has known for us. Through complete reliance on spirit, I calmly face all false conditions, seeing through them to that invisible reality which molds and recreates my affairs after a divine pattern. With a penetrating spiritual vision, I dissipate all obstructions, dissolve all wrong conditions, standing still, I watch the sure salvation of the law of good. I know that my word transmutes and transmits every energy into constructive action, producing health, harmony, happiness, and success. I know that there is something at the center of my being which is absolutely certain of itself. It has complete assurance, and it gives me complete assurance that all is well. I expect everything I do to prosper. I enthusiastically expect success. I let good flow into my experience. I am seeing good in every direction I look. I am looking forward to more good. I think with clarity, move with ease, and accomplish without strain. And so it is. I hope you still feel small stand beside the ocean. When everyone's are closing, I hope one more. Promise me 
you get paid a fighter chance when you get the choice to sit it out or dance. I'll help you dance. I hope you dance. I hope you dance. I hope you dance. All right, that's it. That was the right key, too. And that was the right key. And there it is. That's it. We're done, folks. And <laughs> so it is. Okay. All right. So um, I'll hope to see you next week. Thank you, Deja. She's posted our website uh, connection where you can make a donation to our center. Thank you very much. And good to see you, Marquis, Angela, Merrill, Debbie, Tina. And I think I've said hello to the rest of you. So have a really wonderful week. It'll get cooler tomorrow, so enjoy it. Bye-bye. <laughs>